This video is sponsored by Pixar. All right, okay, I've heard you. You want to know how to make videos. Well, today I'm going to teach you that, how to make videos like this. <laughs> So in order to keep this video from becoming 30 minutes long, I should preface this video that this is a continuation from my last tutorial, which was on how to make pictures. Check that one first because it'll have a lot of Rockstar Editor basics in there that you kind of need to know to move forward onto this one. It should be up here or there somewhere. Check that out first and it'll help you a bunch. What's up everyone, it's DJ Jean here from Logic Films. I've been making videos for about four years now. I've been featured by Rockstar Games a bunch on their front page, on Facebook and everything. Those videos have accumulated over millions of views. Uh, me and my team, we post twice a week on this channel. We mainly post car cinematics. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Leave a like if this video helped you. I'm gonna give you guys a tip that'll help you grow your channel or your page grow very fast after you're gonna start posting stuff all right now let's create something so what i'll start with i'll go get my car i'll make this very quick because the last video i did was kind of long and again make sure you've watched my other video it's very important to know these basics let's park up the car here kind of like this spot so you're gonna basically do the same as if you would take a picture Kind of funny how I went with the juggler again. Anyway, spark up the car there, start recording. You know how this goes. And just for the purpose of this video, I'm recording this at nighttime. I usually never record anything at nighttime because it's way too dark. All right, so we got a standing still shot. So this is what I usually do for my showcases. I do a standing still, sort of three locations with standing still shots and then a bunch of shots with the cars rolling i think it should be daytime soon i think i'll actually wait it out a little bit see you guys in a second all right it is daytime now sort of we just recorded a standing still shot and now we're gonna go with a rolling shot just so we can show you how to follow a car or zoom in on a car while it's moving actually i'm gonna record it here So, that's done. So, if you watched the last video, you know, we'll go back into single player. Stay hydrated. All right, cool. Rockstar Editor. New project again. Load the first clip in. Take this one. From this on, you basically already know from the last video, this is where it gets interesting because this is the part that is a little different. Now, you know about the moving playhead so to make one shot something needs to be moving that's a really big tip i can give you always have something moving in your shot so the camera has to always be moving or something must be moving if you're just gonna have a car sitting around like this it's just gonna be boring you know nothing is going on might as well show you a slideshow of pictures so what do we do we set our first marker. I mean, it doesn't really matter where it is. It depends on your scene. This is going to be different. We set our first marker. I'll set it here. Press A or X. And then we get the first camera shot. There's a little tip at night. Turn the contrast down a bit. You can always edit this in post anyways. But this will make it easy to see. I will not go to minus 18, by the way, but it's just to show you guys. Anyways, so we have our first shot here. That's this one. That's this marker right here. Now, I guess for a standing still shot, it doesn't really matter because there's not a lot moving. What I usually do is I slow down the scene because it just looks better. And then move the play half forward a little bit. This space in between here, it represents how long your shot is going to take. So right now I just move the play half forward a little bit. This second shot is where you're going to want to go from the first shot. So this is the first shot. 
This is the second shot. We need to make it different because otherwise it'll just be a standing still shot. So let's say we'll just move the camera closer, do a little dolly, like this. There we go. First shot, second shot. First shot, second shot. We need to move the camera from one spot to another spot. So marker one, marker two. The camera needs to do something in between those two markers and that will be your shot. So how do we do this? We go into cameras and then this is a very important option. Blend mode. Remember this. I always just tap it to the left once and it will say smooth. Smooth is the one you want. Now, look what happens now if I press play. I'll make this a little bit longer because the shot was pretty short as you see. You see? Or because it was shorter before, it was very fast. If I make it very long, you'll see the shot is very slow. Anyways, so I'll make it sort of like this. Maybe like this. But you'll see the camera is moving now. Now you have one shot. The thing what I always do is I turn off blend easing. There's a Another really good tip because I low-key don't like it when it smooths into a shot. I want the shot to start from standstill and end with standstill, not sort of ease into it and then slow down again at the end because you can't really tell the timing of that. So if you're like me, if you're gonna add it to a beat or whatever, it's hard to get it to fit to a beat. So uh, we turn those off. And you'll see now it doesn't smooth in and when it stops it stops rapidly stop so if i blend easing on on the second shot because you need to turn them off for both shots shot a and b when you turn smooth the blend mode smooth on for the first time it'll also turn it on for this one so turn blend easing off here as well if that's what you're going for then go for it then leave it on but i really don't like it so i always turn that off and that way boom that's one shot go to the next shot we make a new marker i usually place them very close together it'll help with the editing later on let's get another shot for this we'll move the playhead forward a little bit more again we pressed next uh, let's say i want the next shot to end up like this so shot a shot b or c and d basically which one shot a b one and two one two now we need the camera to move so what do we do we go into blend mode camera blend mode smooth you'll see that for this shot the blend easing is already turned off it's just to make it easier for you on the second one it's also turned off as you can see there so that's good now you basically only have to press play and you have a shot for me that's way too fast so i would make it longer there you go that looks very cool now as with pictures you can also add the depth of field effect so you can play around with that all right so that's the second shot these endings this one on the right make sure you move those till the end of your last shot because otherwise it will just be a bunch of dead space so we have shot a or one shot two cool first one done let's go to the moving shot this gets a little bit more complicated because there's uh, stuff you need to keep in mind now the first thing you'll see is if you put it on free camera car's gone <laughs> that's not really cool for a shot so what you'll want to do if you want to do a sort of like a, a drive-by kind of shot where the car is driving by and the camera is following like this what i usually do put the camera on free camera move with target yeah that's not really that much to explain about that it just moves with the target you set it on in this case the target is player so it's me as you see now if i press play it keeps the camera on him on the car all right so that's even if you move the camera like this now here comes the first mistake a lot of people do a lot of people do this and let's say they do this
and then they call it a day. This does not look very cinematic. This does not look very good at all. So as I said before, even though there's something moving in the shot, the shot looks very fake. It doesn't look very good. So what we're gonna do then, So like something small like that could instantly make your shot look better. All right, so I put blend mode on again, blend mode on smooth again, blend easing off on the second shot, shot B, turn it off as well. And now, can we play it? I'll slow this down so it's easier to see. Doesn't this instantly look way better? Just a small movement of the camera will make it look a lot better. And there you have one shot. Just in case that wasn't a really good example, let's do this. Make another shot. Shot one. Now you can keep the camera on move with target. It's gonna move the camera parallel to the target you set it to. See, it moves to the left, to its left. There's no smooth on, but the camera is already moving back. It moves with the car along, but that means it also moves with along with the car. So I would do a free camera to basically be able to do this, or I don't know, uh, go up without, so I can make the car go right and the camera doesn't move with it. I can just go right and have the camera go up or just stay there when I turn move with target off. If you turn this off, move with target, then of course you need to turn blend mode on because otherwise the car is gone. So blend mode on, car gone. So that looks a lot better. We're going for realistic here. I'm not trying to make crazy camera movement. So just to recap this, move with target also makes the camera move in the 3D space of where you're filming. Let's do one where we don't move with the target. Even with this one, it looks very cool without the camera moving. But even this looks kind of odd. If you want to go with it, if you want to go and uh, do a shot without the camera moving, I mean, it's cool. Everyone should have their own style and should be uh, different in that way. So if you want to go with that, go with it. I usually don't. Different ways of filming make this stuff a lot more fun. So there we go. So because it already looks pretty perfect without the camera moving, I'll only move the camera a little bit. I'll just move it a little bit to the left and up. A little bit close to the car. Zoom. Then we turn lemon out to smooth again. No, oh, no, that's good, that's good. And then I'll slow it down a little bit, 50%. Here we go. Go. Boom. Done. So now we have these two shots, three shots. And they all sort of stick together. So this is also what happens a lot. Since we're unable to cut in videos, you'll end up with a lot of dead space like this. What I usually do is I just set it to 200, boom, and it just goes to the next shot quicker. Do something like this. I always have to make sure that you're in between shots, so in between shot A and B is clear. So if there was a pole somewhere here, then the camera would have run into it trying to get from shot A to B and then it'll stop. So always make sure you maneuver around that or just make a different shot basically. All right. Smooth again. Whoa, that actually looks pretty cool. That looks really cool. Go shot from the back. This got that back up in the air. Here he starts moving. Do a small shot like this. So together it'll look like this. Boom, one card done. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna show you this other thing real quick. How to put multiple markers in one shot. This could look very cool, 
could look very bad. Really depends on your timing. So we set our first shot like this. And then with the second shot, shot B, we want it to move back a little bit. We don't turn blending on, on yet. Just back a little bit. Be more centered. There we go. Back as well. And we have to keep adjusting this. Okay, that should work. Now we'll go to the first one of this sort of sort of group of markers. We turn smooth on, smooth on, smooth on, smooth on, and smooth on on all of them. Now it'll look like this. But as you can see, this is what I meant with timing and how accurate you should be. As you can see. That logo of the car came very close, but in my shot it's not close at all, there's quite a big space in between it. So that's just what happens, that's just what needs to be done to uh, have one smooth shot going on. And you can adjust this, you can move this back even more. There we go, that looks pretty cool. And there is a pole. Alright, so here is where I should move it forward a little bit so it doesn't hit it. Turn them back on. Smooth on, smooth on, smooth on. Okay, let's see how this turned out. That's actually pretty good. Better than I expected. But as you can see, over here, I changed the mar these markers, so you need to check where, if the shot isn't how you want it, check at the markers below, down there, which markers closest to the spot that has something that you don't like, and then change those. Okay, so to close this, close this sort of group of uh, markers, what I always do, I make an extra one, and that extra one, I have blend mode off on. And now, see, Cool, so there's that. You can just play around with that. That's, I think, one of the biggest advices as well. Just play around with stuff. Okay, so now we have all these shots. I think I'll end it there, because otherwise this video is gonna get too long. So, we have all these shots, and we have the standing still shots. What do you do from here, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. We go back to the project screen. Make sure you save it. Now, what I always do on the PlayStation, which I can't actually do now because I'm recording on it. But what I always do on the PlayStation is I click on full screen preview. I do not click export because export leaves you with a file that's way too dark, very low quality, and you can't do anything with it on the PlayStation. I don't know about the Xbox, but on the PlayStation you can't do anything with it. So for this video, in order to be able to edit it in a different editing program or to post it on Instagram or to do anything else with it, we need to get a video file out of it so just as taking pictures you need to get a file from the playstation i don't even know how this works on the xbox but i assume it's just you record the screen on xbox it's probably the same but you record the screen so in this case the full screen preview and you you save that so what we'll do here i just clicked full screen preview and i took the heads up display i took that off again so that's R3 on the PlayStation. Xbox is probably the same button. And on PC it's H. Take it out. Then press on your PlayStation. Uh, press the share button twice. It'll start recording. I won't do it now because it's obviously recording this now. But press it twice. A little icon will pop up on the top left of the screen saying that you are recording. And then you just let it play. When it's done playing you press the share button again or whatever button you need to press press it again and then click save clip all right so now we have that file this video file will be saved in your capture gallery what you do then is you grab a usb stick just put the file on there done now you can put the file on your computer on your phone on your laptop whatever and then you can or either edit it further 
or just already posted like this now this is this is basically the basics of how to make a video for me if i would have an other video i would have a trillion of these different shots i'll actually i'll show you my last video this is how a normal project of mine looks this is from the sugoi showcase i posted a few days ago they gave me a video of 15 minutes long and after i just put that on a usb stick and then i threw that in an editing program the editing part of that i will discuss in a different video because that's a whole different story that's then you're really getting into filmmaking but for this video you now know how to make a video you just line up all the shots different shots and then that together gives you a video already all right so now for the biggest message i have for you guys forget about everything i just told you forget about it that stuff that's easy that doesn't really matter everyone can do that i could teach my grandmother how to do videos that's not that difficult the thing that's gonna make you grow the thing that's gonna make you stand out because that's what you need to do because everyone is making videos everyone is doing pictures the thing that makes you grow the thing that's so important the thing that made me blow up quite a bit from the start is being unique i know that's kind of a cliche thing to say but i'm all about being unique one of the messages i want to give you guys today is be unique in whatever you create i think for youtube one of the main things that make you stand out that instantly makes a viewer want to click on your video is the thumbnail the thumbnail is the first thing they see thumbnail and the title the title is up to you the thumbnail i can help you with this is where today's sponsor comes in this is where pixart comes in pixart is a free mobile editing app it's good for editing pictures videos i've personally been using it for years now it's a great way to edit your pictures and motion blur but it's also a very good way to make thumbnails the thumbnail is the first thing everyone sees before even clicking on your video the thumbnail should grab everyone and get them interested even before they click on your video it's also very good to add a watermark which is the next thing you should do which you can also do in pixar make sure you add your logo make sure you watermark all your stuff because before you know it and i have a lot of experience with this your hard work on videos will be taken and uploaded by someone else and then someone else will run off with your work so with that check out pixar the link will be in the description you have to find something that will make you stand out the way i stand out is you know when we started making these videos we were basically the only ones doing it and i think that's also why we got picked up by rockstar games so quickly it'll be easy after what i just showed you to go ahead and copy other people but that's just what you'll be doing you'll just be copying someone that's never gonna work you'll just be chasing someone that you'll never catch and also in general people have a really good bullshit radar they can tell when something is fake or copied or when it's not coming from the heart getting someone to get interested in your work is one thing keeping them interested is a whole different thing and way more different difficult if you work hard enough and if you keep going whenever you feel like stopping you will achieve whatever it is you want to achieve you just got to make sure you're unique because doing what someone else is doing is never good. Now with that, I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, leave a like. Make sure to subscribe. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to really get into the filmmaking part of the editing. Using a different editing program like Pixar or Final Cut Pro or Premiere. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to get into that. If there's something you didn't understand, write it in the comments below. I will be reading them and helping you guys out. Good luck. Have fun. Be creative. Ciao, ciao. Now for the next trick, we're going to use the Rockstar Editor for this. We're not going to take a screenshot of this because it will look horrible. To get this scene in the Rockstar Editor, including everything that's going on behind me, just everything, we need to record it. We need to record this whole